The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN, 8.30 a.m. Thursday morning as we come on the air, expecting those weekly jobless claims to come in as we speak. Right now, you got markets in positive territory. Dow futures up 324 points, trading at 23,837. You're looking at an S&P positive by 43 points, trading positive by 1.5% at 2877. NASDAQ futures up 132, that's 1.5% as well, trading at 9,084. Crude oil, catching quite a bit up two dollars and thirty cents that's almost ten percent in the positive for crude trading at 26.29 we'll start things off let's jump over to the charts we'll start it off with the dow dow futures 23,848 you see the run up that we had from the lows last night of about 23,431. We're now about 400 points above that level trading 23,844 Jumping over to the NASDAQ 100, 9,085, quite an acceleration as well. You back it up to Tuesday where the market sold off in the afternoon. That price level from that sell off about 9,018 and we're now trading at 9,084. And as I pause that number, getting that weekly jobless claims total 3.169 million. The expectation was about 3 million, so a little bit more than the market had been looking for. Of course, we get non-farm payrolls for the month of April tomorrow. That will be interesting, folks. 3.169 million, the weekly jobless claims. That brings, I believe, the seven week total to around 33 million jobs. The number tomorrow could be harsh, folks. Anywhere from 20 to 30 million jobs. They're looking for a loss in the non-farm payrolls number tomorrow. Jumping back to the charts, we cover the NASDAQ 100, S&Ps, and you can see pretty muted response on that jobs number, right? All but expected. The number they were looking for was 3.5. Uh, 0 0.05 million, you got 3.16 million. Nonetheless, S&P's 28.74 holding the gains we had overnight. Crude oil market, there's your acceleration from 3 a.m. trading at $23.56. Crude pops all the way up to 26.30, quite an acceleration. Something I wanted to point out to look for, uh, the end of the day, the final 15 minutes before expiration, the contract expiration, uh, the end of the day, I should say, for commodities, when you get into the commodities, you go to crude oil, right? 2.30 p.m. is when the daily contracts uh, end for the day in futures. There's been a lot of action in the final 15 minutes as these contracts come towards the end of the day. It'd be interesting to see what happens at 2.15 to 2.30 p.m. Nah, nonetheless, the whole day for crude June contract. Gold just under 1,700, trading at 16.98 right now. And the euro US dollar currently under 108 at 107.83. In terms of what else you have happening across the market, lots of earnings action happening today and this week. Jumping around to some of the action, just wanted to kind of talk about, I mean, the, the, the coronavirus comeback, right? These levels, folks, I mean, even when we get negative action, we're now climbing up to that 200-day moving average. CNBC with the graphic there, May, May 6th, that's 28.89 and four record. We're trading 28.73 about in the futures market. But nonetheless, the market, quite a comeback. And I also wanted to show, uh, we now have the number. This is showing uh, where we were in terms of the numbers. Weekly claims in 2020, total over past six weeks, 30.3. And we now know that we got the number 3.16 million. So you're talking about 33.4 million jobs over the seven week total. Other action out there, Moderna shares popping after the FDA approves coronavirus vaccine for phase two trial. The company said it will begin the next round of trials with 600 participants shortly and is finalizing plans for a phase three trial as early as this summer. That company mrna and you got to hope they get it done folks uh quite an incentive i mentioned yesterday i mean the the incentive is literally almost you save the world right you put everything back to, to to normal the world opens back up um for the brilliant people out there that have that possibility of making that happen it's got to be exciting and uh mrna up almost uh 15 18 percent up to 55 48 you were up 
about $10 at one point, so 58.85 on their numbers. The numbers coming out. They lost about 35 cents. They were looking for 36, but the conference call beginning at about 8 a.m. when we jumped on the air right now, 55.45. Other companies with earnings last night after the bell, we got Lyft earnings. Good numbers for them, trading from 26.12 up $4 right now at 30.15. You're also getting a pop in Uber. Uber's got uh, their earnings after the bell tonight, but Uber reacting on the news that Lyft shares actually more riders this year than compared with last year. Jumping over to their numbers, Lyft shares jump 15%. As we said, company reports more riders than last year despite the coronavirus. So Lyft reported a loss. And we already went over those jobs numbers. Let's close that out. Lyft reported losses of 398 million, revenue of almost a billion dollars at 955 million for the quarter. Citing COVID-19 impacts on the business, Lyft recently laid off about 17% of its workforce slash pay for remaining employees by 10 to 30%. Heading into the quarter, Lyft is facing a new lawsuit. We covered that yesterday as well, talking about whether their employees are employees or contractors, that's a long held battle between Lyft and Uber and the likes. Loss per share, $1.31. Active riders, 21.2 million revenue per active rider, 4506. It's interesting, if uh, when I'm using Uber, not right now, because things are shut down, but I'm using it for more than $45. Uh, was that a year, active riders? Revenue per active rider for the quarter, I assume. So that's 90 days. I mean, that's uh, that's 50 cents a day. I'm usually using it at more of a pace than that. But Lyft's losses marked a dramatic improvement from a year ago. It's first as a public company when Lyft reported losses per share of $9. So the net losses expanded from last quarter. However, its active rider number represented a 3% year-over-year improvement despite. That's the big number in here that had these companies popping. It'll be interesting to see where Uber comes in tonight. Uber on their last earnings number, just for some context, these ride-sharing companies, it's interesting to see what's going to happen. You have such a, a pain going on in terms of no action, no people taking it out, whether it's traveling to the airport, to hotels, to to nights out with friends, uh, complete collapse of all of that from 40 plus dollars and change to 13. We're now going to open at about $30, which is right in this range here. For some context here, when Uber came out with their numbers, I believe you have February 6th. Let me go back to Lyft because these two companies, when they came out with their numbers, yeah, Lyft was after them. So Uber came out with their numbers first last quarter. Interesting that Lyft beats them by a day this quarter. So Uber out with their earnings on February 6th. Before any of this coronavirus had impacted things, they stated that they were going to be cash flow positive by the end of this fiscal year, as opposed to the expectation was at the end of next fiscal year. So Uber trades higher. You also saw Lyft shares trade higher on the heels of that, anticipating it. Lyft came out and said, no, 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 we're not going to be cash flow positive until the end of next year still. No expectation that they, that had been raised. Uh, so Lyft paired some of that. But the point being, Uber kind of surprised here to tell people that, hey, you know, we've been stemming cash for a while. We're going to be cash flow positive in this current fiscal year at the end of the year. And then we have a complete collapse at 13. I imagine they're going to have the cash on hand because they came out down here and said they're probably going to have four to six billion dollars on hand in about a year, no matter how things slow down. But they come out with their earnings after the bell tonight. So we'll see. Stay tuned, folks. We're going to come back, see what else we have moving today in the market. We'll be right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the tax opportunity zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in a Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190.
The gold market has taken off topside in a large way in 2020. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The Gold Report took profits in four of its equities in the gold portfolio in the first week of January for a combined profit of 99.2%, with two positions left in the portfolio that have a profit of 67.5% as of January 7th. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, Please contact Direction Shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. S&P is positive by about 42 points. No real reaction to that weekly jobless claims number because we get non-farm payrolls tomorrow, folks. The market is waiting for that number in a big way. Check out where we're trading right now in the S&P futures, 28.75. So kind of approaching this level that we were at early, early yesterday morning before we fell down throughout the day. And also back up at where we were Tuesday afternoon. Interesting level there, as we'll see what's going on. 28.76 currently in that S&P chart from the low of 27.71. So just more than 100 points from the lows we had Sunday night to start the trading week. Other stocks with action out there. How about the recent run Peloton has had? P T O N. Check out that pop, even from last week. You're going from 30, you're gonna open at about 46. That's $8, almost 20% above where you were trading more than 20% actually at 38.03, the close of Friday. But check out the acceleration, really, when you look at the pain that we had from, what did I just put it on? A daily? Yes, this is as far back as it goes public, which is why I was a little thrown off for a moment in terms of the daily. You had the collapse with the COVID collapse of the market from 34 all the way down to 17. Keeping in mind, this chart not even showing, we're gonna open at $45 up here this morning, closed yesterday at 38, quite a pop for Peloton shares. And jumping over to the news for them, Peloton, so, Sales surged 66% from a year ago to 524 million. Peloton last month, uh, they had a largest class ever, more than 23,000 people streaming from home on one particular class. The company which sells a spinning bike for $2,245 and a treadmill for $4,295 predicted to be one of the beneficiaries during the COVID-19 pandemic. People staying at home needing to work out. Uh, we're very fortunate being in Florida, you can always get outside. But if you can't always get outside, I imagine if I was still up in my lovely, awesome hometown of Boston, I would probably be even more interested because in the winter, uh, I'm not sure I'm gonna be really quick to jump back into the gym folks and I have an active gym membership and uh, I'm not sure that that's something that I'm going to be eager to do at least until I let things play out and see how testing goes and see, see how opening the country up 
again goes. Uh, just pulling up this headline that happened to pop up. We're already talking about Uber and Lime. So Uber leading $170 million investment in the company Lime. They do the scooters. Uber will transfer its electric bike and scooter business to Lime under the deal. Okay, they're really segmenting. Uh, let's see if Uber's reacting to this uh, action this morning. Zooming in a little shorter. Still hanging at about $30. So no real reaction on that headline, I guess. Waiting for their numbers uh, tonight after the bell. But I wanted to jump around back to Peloton, right? Interesting stuff. In the long term, I really struggled to figure out how this company is going to be a long term huge profit generator. Uh, earnings per share for them, loss of 20 cents, revenue 524 million, net loss widening during the quarter to 55 million or 20 cents a share compared to a loss of 38 million or $1.76 a share. Analysts were expecting the company to report a loss of 17. Okay, sales from its connected fitness products, such like its bikes, totaled 420 million, up 61% from a year ago. Subscription revenue, which is a big number, totaled 98.2 million, up 92%. That's a real catch here. So these bikes, I was just pulling up their website. I was trying to find uh, the actual bikes with the price tag next to them because there we are. Here's the, and, and that's what it says from 22. Yeah, so here's your action, all right? You want the basic package? $2,245 right now coming at you or we'll let you finance it for three years and three months. For the next almost three and a half years of your life, you'll be paying for this stationary bike, $58 a month with a 0% APR, all right? Now, you want some shoes in there? You want a couple hand weights, 2,400, right? You want a, what is that, a stretch bar, what is that, a foam roller? Um, shoes, weights, headphones, heart rate monitor, bike mat. That's right, it's a bike mat, folks. There it is, uh, $24.94. I pulled up Amazon. I Googled stationary bike. I, I Amazon searched it, I guess you could say in there. Stationary bike. You can get good bikes for $230, $400, right? Um, $200 is the Amazon's choice for the sit-back bike, uh, $171 there, $335. That looks like a pretty legitimate bike you'd see in a gym right there, let alone if you really want to go skimpy on the frills of everything, $115 gets you a bike. Um, $2,250, folks. I imagine, you know, if you're in the market, if you're going to use it a ton, you can rationalize that expense, I guess. They just did it to the tune of almost $500 million, right? But you don't need to do that. I'm a big fan of biking, okay? That's why I say maybe I'd you know, be, be interested in this if I couldn't go outside. Uh, but even if you wanna stay inside, and this is a very replicatable business, okay? And I think that's why you saw this when, when, when Peloton came out with their IPO, they really struggled right out of the gate because a lot of people said, um, hey, you know, you came out and I, I forget the IPO price, maybe it was 28. Um, I forget, but we went from down to almost $20. You did have the run on October, all right? They come out with their earnings first in November, do pretty well, and you trade from 21 up to 36. But just be wary if you're in the stock, especially for the long haul, that uh, you slap an iPad, you slap any tablet on a bike like this, um, and this looks like it almost has a spot for a tablet right up there that you can put in there. And you can follow along in those classes. You can join these classes. You can become a member of Peloton, I believe, by not even having the bike that you can sign up, whether it's $50 a month, attend the classes. Um, I see that as a very tough business model to sell stationary bikes. You know, exercise equipment, it's been around forever. People can rationalize spending a lot of money and it's worth it if it makes you feel healthy. But just be aware out there because uh, you gotta pay $2,300 for a bike for the privilege of then signing up for their app, which I believe is to the tune of $25 to $50 um, a month for that app as well. As a digital member, maybe it's 13, there you go. Yeah, they did, they lowered the price a while back, $13. Still, you're paying $2,300 a month for a bike for 13. And if they just get into the business of being an exercise app, which is what they might be doing, then they gotta sign a lot of people up at $13 a month to compete in that arena. But we'll see what happens. Other companies out there with earnings, let's jump back to it, stops making moves. Okay, we got a lot of companies out recently. I'm just gonna slide up and jump through some of these numbers. Raytheon reported quarterly profit $1.8078 a share, beating $1.22. Revenue also beat forecasts, all right? RTX, we got so many numbers, folks. Let me zoom this in, they're trading actually higher this morning, quite a fall off for them. But there's your pop on their numbers, it's 60.50 right now from 57.92 for Raytheon. Viacom out with their numbers, beating estimates by 17 cents a share, earnings of $1.13, revenue also in above forecast. 
They logged a 51% increase during the quarter in domestic streaming and digital video revenue. Viacom, VIAC, check out that pop from 1488 to 1750. I'm seeing how that translates. Verizon's up a bit with the market. AT&T up a bit with the market. Uh, jumping around, Bristol Myers Squibb. $1.72 a share, 23 cents above estimates, revenue also topping forecast. It's maintaining its 2020 earnings forecast despite the pandemic that it thinks will shave 500 million off their yearly revenue. BMY is their symbol. There's the pop from 61.13 up to about 62.45 right now. Dish reported better than expected first quarter revenue but lost 250,000 subscribers, DISH to 2250 from 2290. Hilton Worldwide, quarterly earnings 74 cents a share, beating 55 cents a share estimates, revenue essentially in line. The pandemic did not become significant until March. That's gonna be the question, folks. What happens next quarter, right? Hilton shares up a bit to 74. JetBlue out with their numbers. Let's see how JetBlue is trading as we come to this break. Basically even. Stay tuned, folks, we'll be right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get the competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated Traded fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information.
Welcome back, folks. Markets right where we started off the program, 2876, up about 42 points. You see the action we had from the close yesterday. We've kind of just been hanging out at this level since about, call it maybe 5.45 a.m. this morning, 2876 in the S&Ps with about 35 minutes to go until that opening bell. Jumping back to some of the coronavirus stories. So the admin, in terms of the Trump administration, they're going to be shelving the CDC guide to reopening the country. So the administration itself had asked for this document. It's a 17 page document that the CDC put together, Centers for Disease Control and Prevention Team, titled Guideline for Implementing and Opening Up America Again Framework. And they're not gonna release that to the public. Uh, just be careful out there, folks. I talked about this in my program yesterday. The numbers are still staggering and the coronavirus is still present and it's tough when you can't really trust the information you're getting everywhere. And it's unfortunate that we can't see what the CDC is recommending for opening back up the country. I wonder if that says you need certain things in place that are not going to be in place in terms of whether it's testing, in terms of whether it's the number of days that you're seeing declining cases that is not happening in states. Florida is back open, Georgia is back open. I just wanna see that information. I wanna be informed. I mean, yesterday, and this is not political folks, but you gotta be aware of what's going on here. You had National Nurses, Nurses Day, and you had a nurse saying in the Oval Office that just that the PPE had been sporadic, and this was not just any nurse, um, this was, the president of the American Association of Nurse Practitioners said that certainly pockets of areas where PPP is not ideal, but this isn't a presidented time. Um, it's, it's a tough one when the president claps back at a nurse just that says the PPE has been sporadic. And then the next headline is that they're not going to tell you what the CDC said for opening back up the country. So beware up there. It's all about safety. It's not about partisan. Um, think on your toes and be ready for some volatile markets, non-farm payrolls tomorrow. We'll be live on the air for that number, man. I'm looking forward to that. But you know what I'm looking forward to? Larry Pesavento coming up live with Trade What You See at 9 o'clock. I'll be back at 10 o'clock with Tom. Live programming all day at TFNN. We'll be right back, folks.